All right, today we're going to be adjusting valves on the Arctic Cat 500. This is a 2006 model. There'll be a handful of other years and models that are gonna be identical to this process. So I'll try to have those listed below. This motor here is actually out of a Suzuki 500. Arctic Cat used their motors for a, a short period of time in the early 2000s. So this is gonna be a Suzuki motor. The rest of the four-wheeler is gonna be the Arctic Cat. So if you guys have questions or comments on this video or other videos, uh, make sure and leave those below. If this video has been helpful, please give us a thumbs up. Like I said, this is the Suzuki motor, so I'll try to have listed below a handful of other Suzuki services that we've done on the 500, as well as some of the differential stuff, the drivetrain assembly. We've got the clutches on the other side. We've torn into those on the Arctic Cat and the Suzuki, so make sure you check those videos out. Any special tools that we're using for this project, I'll try to have links below on that. I do appreciate any feedback I can get from you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Now I'm going to uh, zoom in a little bit and show you the exact process of adjusting valves. One thing I want to say before I get into this process, you don't actually have to remove all of the body work to adjust the valves. You need to simply get up to the top end here. You're going to want to pull this cover up top for the intake and for the exhaust. You do not have to remove front and rear fenders, wheels, drivetrain, all the suspension. We're doing a couple other projects on this uh, Arctic Cat, which is why we have those uh, components off of there. So make sure you check those videos out on my channel and we will be getting into the valve adjustment on this motor. Alright, the first thing that you're going to want to do when you're adjusting the valves is find top dead center on the compression stroke. So, I like to pull this recoil. Some people will leave this on and they'll just use this pull rope to try to find top dead center. For me, it's a little bit more difficult to do that, find the right spot. So, I just pull the 8 millimeters off around this cover, remove this. Underneath here is our recoil pull starter cup. Now, this is something a little easier to grab onto and twist back and forth. If you're twisting, if you're turning this motor over, you want to do it counterclockwise. So you want to turn it this direction here, and that is how you're going to find top dead center. You want to grab an Allen, and this is an eight millimeter Allen. Pull this plug here. You're going to have a brass washer uh, on this plug. You want to make sure that that goes back on there. Now, looking down into this sight window here, you're going to find a line on your flywheel. So I'll give you a close up picture of that here uh, at some point in the video, but you need to find top dead center and that's by finding the line on the flywheel and it's gonna line up with the center of this plug here. So turn this again counterclockwise until that line comes up. The next thing you're gonna wanna do is grab a 10 millimeter wrench. You can use a ratchet wrench or just a regular wrench. If you've got the fuel tank off like we do, you can get a socket down in there. It's a little bit more challenging to get a socket on there when you got your fuel tank on there. So. Remove these two 10 millimeters. There's gonna be a nut on this one as well as a bolt. So on the intake side, you've got a nut and a bolt. Pull that cover off of there. Now, just in case I forget, you wanna make sure that that O-ring in there is in good condition. If you've ordered a top-end rebuild kit or a top-end gasket kit, you're gonna have O-rings uh, included in that kit for your valve adjustment cover there. So replace those if you have them. If not, just inspect them and make sure they're in good condition. That's your intake side. This is your exhaust side. So on this one, you're gonna have two bolts. You don't have any nuts on this, this side here to remove this cover. So we're gonna remove this cover. They look similar. I think they actually are identical. So those covers are the same. I like to just keep them separated just because that's how they came. I'm gonna leave them that way. Now, the next thing I like to do is before we start adjusting our valves on here, I like to just check them to see where we're at. I'm not gonna loosen up these lock nuts until I have them um, inspected and I'll take measurements just to see where we're at. See if we're tight, see if we're loose. If one of them's way different than the other one, I like to know that before we start screwing around with anything. That way, I know if our valves are wearing out, if they're wearing evenly, if we've got other issues. And when I tear into this head a little bit later and show you what this, the inside of the top end looks like, I'll give you a more detailed video here 
uh, fairly soon, but I'll show you why I like to inspect those and why I like to look things over so closely. So we're gonna grab our uh, feeler gauges here and measurements for your intake is gonna be 0.05 to 0.10, and that's gonna be millimeters. So you wanna find a uh, feeler gauge that's gonna be in that range. Now, if we haven't pulled anything off or adjusted anything yet, we're just gonna grab one of these feeler gauges where it should be, stick it in there, and I'll give you a close-up picture of that too here in a second, and I'm gonna see where we're at. Now you want to be able to get it in there, you want to slide it back and forth, and you want to be able to move it just slightly. Okay, if you can really push it in there and it's it's really, really sloppy, then uh, you're going to want to make some adjustment. If you can get that feeler gauge in there, but it's fairly snug, but you can get it in there, that's probably about where you need to be. If you can't get it in there at all, you're going to need to adjust those, uh, those adjuster screws. So... The first one here feels really good. The second one over here, this is the farthest one from me, I can't even get my feeler gauge in there. So grab a smaller feeler gauge then, and shove it in there, see if you can get a smaller one in there. If you can't get anything in there, then it's gonna be too tight, you're gonna wanna adjust it. You might have a very loose exhaust and a very, very tight intake, and I would probably turn this over one turn to make sure you're on the right stroke. There's top dead center compression, there's top dead center fire. You wanna make sure you're on top dead center compression. If you're on top dead center fire, your intake's gonna be tight, your exhaust is gonna be loose. Okay, so um, turn it over one more turn, get to that line again up here on top dead center, maybe check your valves again. You should be able to, if, a, if they're fairly close, you should be able to grab these adjusters or your rockers here and rock them back and forth and you should have just a very, very small amount of movement. If your valves are down and that means your valves are open, then you're not going to want to adjust your valves on that stroke. So you can kind of tell by where your valve adjustment screws are. If they're clear down, then your valves are probably open and you're not going to want to adjust them on that stroke. If you do and you then turn your engine over to top dead center compression, you're gonna have a serious amount of gap and you're gonna cause uh, some major problems with your motor, it probably won't even start. So, that being said, let's get these loosened up. Grab an eight millimeter wrench and we're gonna loosen both of these lock nuts up. I told you the one side was about where it needed to be. I'm gonna loosen them both up and adjust them to where they're both even. So loosen them up, again, that's an eight millimeter. And now if they are really tight, you might have to grab a small pair of pliers or Suzuki makes a special tool to get on the end of that adjustment screw and you might need to turn those uh, because you may not be able to do them with your finger. We are able just to turn ours by hand there um, so we're not going to need a pair of pliers or a special wrench to get in there. Now we're going to get our 0 .08 millimeters. We're going to take it, stick it in there. Once I get it in there, what I like to do is take my adjustment screw, turn it all the way down and then I take my lock nut and I take and I'll actually then tighten that lock nut up while my feeler gauge is in there. I like to keep an eye on our adjustment screw because if that's turning while I'm tightening that lock nut, then we know that we're probably gonna be too tight. So once you get that lock nut tightened up, you can push that feeler gauge back and forth and see if there's uh, some drag there, make sure it's not too much drag and make sure you've got plenty of drag so you know it's not gonna to be too loose. If you can't get your feeler gauge out of there, then it's probably gonna to be too tight. So then we'll go to the other intake and do the exact same thing. Stick it in there, tighten up that lock nut and that adjustment screw. These uh, lock nuts should be seven foot pounds, so they're not extremely tight, but we'll leave our feeler gauge in there. We'll take and tighten down that lock nut and double check it. And it's good where it's at. Now we'll go to the exhaust side, do the exact same thing. Before we start loosening things up, we'll check it and see where it's at. We'll put our feeler gauge in there, 0.17 to 0.22 millimeters. And I'll have listed below what it is in inches there and um, adjust those uh, somewhere in the middle is what I like to do. So we were looking at probably a 0.2 for the uh, exhaust side. So same thing, loosen those lock nuts adjust your adjuster screw, tighten those lock nuts, 
double check that your feeler gauge isn't too tight or too loose, and then buckle those up. Now before I put these caps on there, I'm going to take a couple, a couple of close-up pictures for you, and then I will uh, buckle everything up. All right, if we have everything tightened down up here where it needs to be, we can take our covers, put those back in. Again, inspect those O-rings, make sure they're in good condition. Make sure they stay in place when you flip them over and put them on your cylinder head. We can take our plug here, making sure that our brass washer is on there. We can snug that up, and then we can go ahead and put our recoil pull starter back on there. And you are all set to go riding. So if you guys have questions or comments, make sure and let me know. Again, check our channel. We're going to have a bunch of other videos on this Arctic Cat 500 or Suzuki 500 motor. And uh, appreciate any feedback I can get from you guys. Thanks for watching.